When JavaScript plays a big part in a Rails application, it becomes necessary to pass information from your Rails app to JavaScript. And in this episode, I want to explore some techniques on doing just that, on how do we get our Rails variables into JavaScript. So I have this simple page here that just says loading products. And the idea here is that we want JavaScript to take over and handle the fetching and displaying of the products on this page. But to do that, we may need to pass some information from our Rails app to JavaScript. So here's what that view template looks like. Very simple, it just says loading products inside of a products div here. Now let's say that JavaScript needs to know what URL to call to fetch the products from, and I hate to write static URLs in JavaScript, so let's gen generate that dynamically through our Rails app and pass that into JavaScript. One way we could do that is by adding a JavaScript tag directly in this view here, and then setting in the window variables we want, and then set that to our products URL instead of our Rails app, making sure to escape it with JavaScript like that. And then inside of the JavaScript, or CoffeeScript in this case, uh, we can first make sure that the DOM is loaded, and then we can have access to that products URL variable directly inside of here. So let me alert this just to show you that it's working. So I'll reload this page here, and there's our alert dialog with the URL. So that works. But now let's say we want to uh, preload this page with an initial set of products instead of having to fetch the first set of products from a separate request. So we can set a products variable here to our, let's fetch, uh, how about 10 products? And we'll need to make sure to convert it to JSON so it's compatible with JavaScript. And then we find out that Rails is trying to do HTML escaping in here, and so we have to call raw on here so that it doesn't do any escaping. So this approach can become a hassle pretty quickly. Now an alternative way to pass uh, data into JavaScript that I normally go with is to use data attributes on HTML tags. So I have this products div here, and let's say I pass in a data attribute such as our URL, and then I could just pass that products URL directly inside of here. And then we can use jQuery to fetch that data very easily from our products div, just called data, and then the attribute name such as URL. So this technique has the same effect, but it feels a bit cleaner to me. But one thing I don't like about this approach is needing to nest ERB tags within HTML attributes. That just feels messy to me. So usually if I need to insert dynamic data into an HTML tag, I'll usually switch to content tag instead. So we can make this a div tag with the ID of uh, products, and then make that a block and then end it down here. So that will make that same div tag. But what I especially like about this approach is that you can pass in data attributes within a data hash. And I believe this feature was added in Rails 3.1, uh, so we could say URL and set that to our products URL, just like that. What's also nice is this is automatically converted to JSON. So instead of the URL, let's say we pass in our products and take the first 10 again, we don't have to call to JSON on this. It's automatically going to be called and converted to JSON when it's turned into the data attribute. And then when we fetch that data from inside of our jQuery, it's going to see that it's JSON and parse it and convert it to a JavaScript object for us. You can see that if I reload this page here, we get an array of objects and not a string of JSON back. Now, if you have a lot of data to pass to JavaScript, this technique here can still get pretty messy. Let me show you one more solution for passing data to JavaScript, and that is using the gone gem. This allows you to set variables from within your controller and then access them from within JavaScript. So first go to the gem file and add the gone gem, and then run the bundle command to install it. Then next go into your application layout file and add a call to include gone inside of your head tag. And if you do it before you load any JavaScript, you'll be able to access the variables without waiting for the full DOM to load. And then inside of a controller action, you'll be able to set variables on this gone object. So let's set our products here to the product, uh, the first 10 products and it will automatically be converted to JSON and accessible from within JavaScript. You can see that if I go to my CoffeeScript file, let's alert the call to gone products, which is the variable we set in the controller, and I don't even need to load the DOM first either. Now reload the page, and there are our product objects directly from the controller. Now the way this works is very simple. If you view the source, you can see it simply creates a script tag and fills the gone variable with data that we set in the controller. Now what's really cool 
is that Gaon has support for both Rabble and JBuilder templates, which I've covered over the past couple weeks. So to give an example, let me create a Rabble template here. Uh, make it json.rabble. And I'll just paste in some code in here to make a simple Rabble template. And then in the controller, we can call gone.rabble and then pass a path to the template, which should be either a full path or relative to the Rails root. So that's under views product slash index.json.rabble. And then to assign this to a variable name, you can call as uh, products. That way it will store that array of products in that variable. So now when we hit reload, we get the same array of objects, but this time based on the data inside of the Rabble template. Now one potential gotcha with Gon is that if you don't set any Gon variables in your controller action and you try to call Gon in your JavaScript, this won't work because the Gon object will not be set, so you'll get an error. So it's always best to first check if the Gon object exists before attempting to call any further variables or attributes on it. Now if you want more information on Gon, be sure to check out the documentation. Uh, there are some options I didn't mention here, such as a camel casing option, you can change the namespace, and so on. And that finishes up this episode on passing data from your Rails app to JavaScript. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, we finish up the series on Backbone.js. Here I show you how to add entries, respond to events, select random winners, and handle validations. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.